John Oliver and Monica Lewinsky had some powerful words from victims of public shaming that have gone viral. That plus Lauren Daigle has some moving advice on how to overcome anxiety and some tough news out of Nigeria where uh, it looks like religious violence is getting a lot worse. We tell you about all of those stories coming up. This is Relevant Daily. Relevant Daily. Hey everyone, I'm Cameron Strang and welcome to Relevant HQ and welcome to Relevant Daily where we bring you what you need to know at the intersection of faith and culture. Now before we get into those stories, I want to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a landing page, a professional blog, a beautiful gallery, or an online store, it's all possible with Squarespace. They have award-winning templates, customizable settings, even powerful e-commerce solutions all without a single plugin. And right now they're offering a special deal for Relevant Daily viewers. Go to squarespace.com slash relevant to, for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code relevant to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Go do it. I've used that code. I've used Squarespace for years and we're very grateful for their sponsorship. Okay, to tell us more about those stories, please welcome our very own Jesse Carey. Hey, Cameron. Hey, man. So good, good, good Tuesday to you, sir. Tip of the hat to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Hey, Cameron, <laughs> did you get a chance to see last week tonight with John Oliver this past weekend? It, this, the, if Sunday, you didn't right? catch it, the the, seg- the main segment on it's been going viral this week. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I watched it every week. So, you know, Oliver did a, a segment on public shaming. And essentially, he opened it up by making the case that public shaming has never been a more prominent part of culture, largely because of the Internet. You know, people can, you know, get in mobs and actually just find stuff to be mad at. And sometimes, as he pointed out, it's actually justified. You know, you look at someone like Tucker Carlson, who's a powerful person who needs to be held accountable when he says just horrible things. But the conversation shifted a little bit when he brought in Monica Lewinsky. Uh, you know, Monica Lewinsky since he was actually in her only in her early 20s when she was involved in the scandal with then President Clinton. Uh, there was kind of a powerful moment where Oliver actually apologized for some of the jokes he made about Lewinsky, you know, back when he was a Daily Show correspondent. But as he pointed out, a lot of those late night show hosts, uh, you know, including he, he pointed out Jay Leno, like he made Monica Lewinsky a punching bag for years, have never apologized when, you know, in fact, we look back on that scandal now and see that, you know, Monica Lewinsky was was a 20 something who was working for a very powerful person who was a known manipulator who put her in this really terrible uh, situation. So they had a really interesting conversation about public shaming. And, you know, Lewinsky, you know, since this has all happened, she's actually been an anti bullying advocate and has started the Click with Compassion campaign that seeks to kind of raise awareness about public shaming and online bullying. And so, Cameron, a real, one of the one of my favorite parts of the interview was, you know, John Oliver asked her really directly as someone who's been in this, you know, she's been one of those prominent faces of online bullying and public shaming. You know, what would she say to someone who's not just like a public figure who's being public shamed on Twitter, but she, you see this happening in schools, you know, some uh, a kid does something and gets dragged on, on social media. She actually asked what her advice would be to someone that's experiencing public shaming on any level, and here's what she had to say. What would your advice be to someone who's either in the eye right now of the storm of public shaming or a kid who's being humiliated at school online? Is there anything that you'd be able to tell them from your personal experience that nobody else could? The first thing I'd probably say is that you can get through it. You can move past it. I know it feels like in this one moment that your life will forever be defined by this, but it won't. And it may be hard. It may take more time than you ever could have imagined, but you can move past something like this. Powerful. Hey, uh, tell us uh, about uh, this Lauren Daigle uh, message that's been going around. Yeah, so Lauren Daigle, she's out on tour right now, and she's got the you know a chart topping album. She's someone that you look at and be like, man, everything's going great for Lauren Daigle right now. You know, she's recently on our cover, topping charts on you know mainstream radio and also the Christian charts. But she did something interesting uh, just this week. She had a live Q and A with members of the audience. Uh, you know, to kind of a uh, you know casual type of thing, and someone in the audience asked just really bluntly, kind of unprompted. What would her advice be to someone who's struggling from anxiety? And you can see Lauren Daigle kind of like, not caught off guard, but it wasn't the type of question that you can tell she's normally asking in that setting. But her answer was really powerful. Uh, Let's hear a clip. Even now, as an adult, when 
more anxiety has added to my life. I've never been anxious. I didn't really know about that. But the older I'm getting, the more I'm starting to learn what, what that is and how that has come up in my life. And so because of that, I have to say, okay, God, I want to know what you see for tomorrow. Can you come and give me that peace so that I can rest tonight? Can you show me, all right, I might have fear here, but if I really believe in that perfect love that you have for me, I'm just going to push fear aside and say, that's a lie. You're trying to get in my head. You're trying to get in my heart. It's not going to work. Now, when I push that aside, I say, okay, God, come and show me what your love looks like right here. You're right here in this moment. That's one of the great things about Lauren Daigle. It's not only is she like a, a great singer and her album's great, she's also like super approachable and seems like a really down to earth person. Well, as in our cover story a couple of issues ago, she opened up a lot about taking that year off because yeah. remember like her debut album kind of got way more successful than anybody anticipated. And the pressure of all that, it, um, you know, forced her to kind of need to go home and hibernate and just get out of all that hustle and all that. Uh, for a year, which is a remarkable yeah. thing. So you can tell, like even she said in that uh, Q&A, she doesn't identify as being somebody who's anxious, but in those moments when anxiety is overwhelming, you know, having to deal with that um, in, a, in a tangible way is, is difficult. And, and it, you know, everybody's susceptible to that. You don't have to be successful like Lauren to feel pressure. And, and yeah. it's just awesome when leaders like that are so transparent about what they're going through. It helps so many people. It's awesome to see. Hey, yeah. uh, so tell us about this news coming out of Nigeria. Normally we end Relevant Daily on a palate cleanser, a nice little like, oh, here's a, uh, a clip or a trailer or something like that. You decided to go, you know, we've been zigging. You wanted to zag today. You're going to bring in some really hard <laughs> news out of Nigeria to end Relevant Daily. Yeah, well, this is an important story that's kind of been underreported. You know, um, this week, so this actually transpired on Monday, um, 52 people were killed in Nigeria, in the northern part of the country, in a single attack. And they were, it was a Christian community, and 100 homes were destroyed in the village. Um, now, just this month alone, so in the, month of, in the month of March alone, 120 Christians have been killed in Nigeria. And there are all these kind of coordinated attacks in the northern rural part of the country that's much more lawless than some of the more developed part of the countries. Um, now, this isn't an uncommon occurrence. Last summer, so this is back in June, 100 people, 100 Christians were killed in a single attack in a single day. Uh, it was a group of 100 Christians that was leaving a funeral service at a church. Now, they're being targeted by a group of radical, radical Islamic jihadists. But, uh, you know, like the attacks that were happening a few years ago with Boko Haram, the government is really struggling to get this under control. Now, you know, here's the kind of a surprising stat. When you think about Nigeria, it's one of the richest countries in Africa. It has a very young population. It has one of the youngest populations in the world, a very progressive young population. Uh, it also has a t millions and millions of Christians in the country. So when you think about Christian persecution, you generally don't think of Nigeria because they've had the last couple of presidents have been Christian, you know, but it's not institutional persecution that Christians are facing in countries like North Korea or China. This is actually communities uh, attacking other communities and, and just straight up religious violence that, the, that um, you know, the government can't control. Right now, they are number 12 on Open Doors World Watch list, list. And when you think about the number of Christians in the country, that is absolutely shocking. It really is. It's crazy. And, and, it, and how underreported this is. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, any, any death is, is, is terrible, but it's crazy that 52 are, are, are slaughtered and it's barely making any headlines. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you're bringing this out. Wow. We'll, we'll definitely keep watching it. Yeah, uh, for and, sure. And we'll be reporting more on relevantmagazine.com this absolutely. week. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Jesse. Hey, uh, tune in throughout the day on social media, uh, on Twitter. At, you can follow us at Relevant on Instagram. You can follow us at Relevant Magazine. And make sure to like the Relevant page at Facebook. And like Jesse said, for all the latest content throughout the day, make sure to check out the homepage at relevantmagazine.com. We have our latest audio and video headlines throughout the day and also features from the magazine and exclusive stuff for the web. Make sure to check it out throughout the day. Hey, thanks for watching Relevant Daily and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring. Remember, go to squarespace.com slash relevant for a free trial. And when you're ready to sign up, use offer code relevant to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Um, 
Make sure to tune in here every weekday at noon. We will be live wherever you're watching this. Go ahead and hit subscribe and make sure to tune back every day for the latest Relevant Daily. And if you miss an episode, you can either watch it on demand or you can get our audio podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Just search for Relevant Daily and we are there. Hey, thanks everybody for watching and we will see you tomorrow. This is Relevant Daily. Relevant Daily.